Hello, my name is Sandu Bacio and uh, my name is from Romania, to be specific actually from Transylvania and I'm a camera collector. You know, you go to those meetings when different people are coming and they are saying, hey, my name is and I'm uh, an alcoholic or whatever. Well, you're not going to see that too much uh, on YouTube. You're not going to see people coming and say, hey, uh, I'm an unboxing addicted or, you know, hey, I'm a camera collector addicted. Well, those are truths. Yes, there are people who really love cameras and I guess I'm one of them. What you see around here, they are some of my cameras and the intention of uh, this uh, YouTube channel is, at least we try to do it, uh, first of all it's education. We're going to talk about cameras, different types, a little bit about the history of the cameras. But what I'm interested for is actually the evolution and how the cameras actually evolved and how they end up being such a nice thing. For me, actually, a camera is an object of art. Uh, I love the cameras. And it's a little bit different from what they initially they were established to be. Uh, their function was changed during the time. And right now, it's pretty hard to find a camera doing only what she's supposed to be doing. Uh, only taking pictures and having nice memories. Nowadays, uh, you see cameras embedded in the iPhones or different devices, you know, uh, uh, phones or whatever, uh, iPads and everything which is related to Apple or everything which is related to Google doesn't really matter. Uh, the point is the camera is doing far more than initially supposed to do. Right now it's just a part of it. And I guess the, in the future that is going to be smaller and smaller, you know, a camera will be embedded in a device or whatever, you know, bracelet, you know, with some screens on your palm or on the other side and you can read it and whatever. But uh, the camera itself is not going to do what she initially was supposed to do. It's going to take movies, it's going to stream in the media, it's going to post on Facebook and YouTube and so on but we're gonna forget actually the camera initially was taking a memory and you look to it and it's gonna have value for you only because it is personal it's for you of course it's an artistic way you can take a camera and make pictures and frankly it doesn't matter which camera you have uh, as long as you have the artistic sense and you can have a nice image or a nice picture but uh, that is not what you're gonna see on this YouTube channel I will probably talk about it I will probably show you the evolution pattern how the cameras evolved and you know the reason why I like them and also where you can find cameras uh, their values, you're not going to see too much on YouTube about their values and mostly I will talk, as I said, about the evolution path. Uh, this is what I actually I'm interested in cameras and you know we have a few here this one here being one of the earliest back in 18th centuries in a, uh, as, as you probably know photography started almost 200 years ago with uh, Nietzsche with a French guy, uh, he was trying to make a picture outside of his window, Nietzsche for Nips is his name, and he sort of succeed. However, the background behind is far more older than 1825, 26. Uh, it's far more older than that. Um, as you know, cameras got the lens, it got the body, and of course the chemical process which happens behind taking the you know, the light and making the photography itself. So, uh, 2000 years ago, for instance, all the lens, they were new by the ancient Greeks, or probably even more than that, maybe it goes back to Mesopotamia, so, you know, we have like 3000 years old, all behind. 
However, uh, we didn't have the camera or the chemical process behind. Uh, <clears throat> back in uh, ancient Greece, uh, we had even mirrors, and all the optical process was known by the Greek, uh, ancient Greeks. Uh, we know it was a history with uh, somebody using some lens and put on fire some of the old, uh, you know, naval and boats and sails or whatever. That, but they succeeded to put that on fire using some lens. So that happened like 2,000 years ago. Uh, regarding the camera itself, <clears throat> back in uh, let's say 16th, 17th century, it was known as camera obscura. And that was used by painters. Basically, you have a camera, a room, and you have a hole on it, and uh, that, you know, the light can pass through that hole and is reversing the the whole image in front of that hole, and is becoming, you know, return it, you know, reversed uh, on the other side of the wall, and could be used by painters to make different sketches and so on. So, I guess probably. Even in the Renaissance it was used, but uh, officially documented it was in 17th century, around that time. Uh, <clears throat> regarding the mechanical part, I guess everybody knows the uh, mechanical part was well invented uh, back in ancient, you know, there were different gears and things like that, so uh, yes, the, the background for mechanical, it was far away in the history behind. Uh, but the, the clock is probably the most uh, classical example. Clocks uh, they were available, you know, right around 1000 and different gears could be assembled and, you know, going together. Different mechanical leverage and things like that, they were well known. So, therefore, a camera from optical and mechanical point of view could be invented far more earlier than 1825, 26. However, uh, it is a pattern, so somebody was thinking about how we can uh, have the light, you know, capture it and, uh, you know, whatever you can see or reflected by the light uh, could be captured in a, in a film or, you know, a surface or a chemical process to make it permanent, which that happened in 1825 by Mitchell Ford Nibs. Uh, so basically all the mechanical part was available, all the uh, lens principles and optics known, they were well known. However, the only thing which was missing was the chemical process, which, you know, it was discovered 200 years ago. <clears throat> right now, actually, we are, we are far more beyond that. Uh, this uh, chemical process is actually dying, so there are only a few people which are still doing that. Um, this chemical process was, you know, exploding for a while uh, back in at the beginning of the century, uh, 100 years ago. So it was really popular. Uh, but right now, you know, the chemical process was replaced with an electronic process, or you know, uh, having the image stored in a chip or whatever on the server and you can see it on your screen. Uh, fewer and fewer people are start printing pictures or you know as, at least at the memory side um, to having as a, you know uh, things to look to it. Uh, a lot of people are using the small devices, phones or whatever in front of your computer and you look to the picture and who knows, you know, from 1,000 pictures maybe you print one and that is going to be, you know, change, you know, less and less picture being printed. So, regarding the history, this one, um, this is how uh, it was a, a camera, large format. This is how actually the, the photography started, you know, having a very large camera, size like half of this table and having some lens in front of very simple lens and on the back we have something which was capturing the light. Uh, photography means photography, uh, photo means light, graphy means draw, so basically it's uh, drawn with light, if it's not probably the right translation, but anyway, uh, that is the name of photography, you know, uh, 
capturing light and drawing with it. Uh, so during the time, this is how we started 200 years ago, very big, big cameras. The process was improved and of course it was impractical to have all those cameras around you. So they become smaller and smaller. This is a Kodak Brownie that is, uh, this was actually invented toward the eight, end of 18th century when actually instead of having uh, a plate or something big behind, uh, George Eastman came with an idea to put this on a film. And the film was actually rolling inside of this small box and you know we can make more more pictures basically at the time you did only one picture each time and you know you do all the setup and all that so right now you can have even kids to make pictures so 18th century was basically uh, defined as having big cameras the quality was good actually you know very, very sharp ones especially for the yellow types uh, but uh, very heavy equipment, very uncumbersome and very difficult to work with it. And toward the end of the century, this was streamlined. And you know, back at the uh, beginning of 1900s, you can have a very nice, easy one to work with. The things evolved, of course, and uh, back in 1920s, uh, the cameras become something like this. Uh, this one is a pocket camera. Uh, it's got the lens and a bellow which adjusts the focal distance and of course you can have different cartridges behind it with a very large number of pictures we could take. So that was uh, very characteristic for 1900s up to 1920s, very popular ones. Uh, those are the folding cameras you know, pocket size or even bigger a little bit, or even smaller, of course. Uh, but that was characteristic for the beginning of the century. Up to 1929, uh, when uh, another type of cameras actually emerged, they are the uh, rangefinder cameras. Uh, this is a Contax, but the first one was actually a Leica. Uh, very interesting cameras. What's the, the difference between all those? Well, it's far more compact, you know, smaller and smaller. Plus, the film could roll inside here. From um, a focusing point of view, those cameras actually, um, they have two images which you need to over overpose when you want to know you are in focus. On all the other ones, you cannot see what you have because you don't see through the lens itself. And that being said, through the lens, well, back in the end of uh, 40s, let's say beginning of 50s, uh, the TLRs, twin lens reflex, appear on the market. Uh, this is a Yashica, but the first one actually was invented back in 18, 1800s, but it was too big. And, you know, they, they become far more practical and during the time between 50s, 60s, those are far more popular than rangefinders. Uh, so far, those the rangefinders are probably the you know the most loved by the photographers, uh, and uh, there are reasons why. You know, they are very nice cameras. Those ones are also pretty nice, and they open the the gate to have slightly better cameras, in the sense that. The film behind, if you want to have more details and being more sharp and things like that, the film needs to be bigger. So, sort of, we go back to a bigger one. And you have here a Hasselblad, uh, that is a medium size camera. So, and after the Hasselblad, which you know is still popular even right now, uh, that was back in uh, 60s. Uh, we have a new type of camera, which is something like this. SLRs, single lens reflex. And this camera actually, you look through here and actually you see what is from the lens. So those SLRs become very popular and they are still up. Uh, back in the uh, 70s, 
and they dominate the market up to the 90s. Those SLRs actually they were replaced by DSLRs, digital single reflex cameras. And of course, we have an example here that is a Canon uh, 5D. And of course, we have Nikon and all other products which are using a lot of DSLRs, which are actually right now what is on the market. So that is the news. As I said before, uh, the trend right now is to have cameras embedded in phones, iPhones, the most classical example. And you know, you can make pictures, just take it out, making a picture, and that is very, very easy to do. Uh, however, what I'm seeing in the future is going to be something different than that. Uh, it is another process right now, it's a camera called, call it Lytro which is actually used in the, the field of light. Um, that, that probably is going to be adapted to DSLRs. You can easily make a device adaption and all the lenses, lenses can be adapted to have that embedded inside. Uh, however, I don't think that, uh, I don't think that is going to be the future. The future is going to be far more portable, something very light, very easy to use and of course that is going to be streamlined directly on a server. So, you know, everything is going to be saved electronically, and I guess that's the future. However, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to take each of those cameras, at least those which I have, and I will present you the evolution pattern. I will present you what I think is interesting about those. And, you know, connecting those dots from history, you can probably predict the future. And, you know, I think that is going to be at least different from what usually you see on the internet. As I said, this is an educational channel. Uh, you know, we're going to talk about history, we're going to talk about evolution. I'll probably talk a little bit about how to use the camera if that's also training purpose. However, it's not the intent. Uh, and also, the other thing which we're going to talk about is actually to have a little bit of fun. So, you know, I can show you what you can do as a collector, how you can clean the cameras, how you can uh, make it better, and learn from my mistakes, how we can destroy our cameras. Unfortunately, that happened. So, you know, learn from it. I hope you're going to like it. I hope you're going to subscribe, if you like to subscribe. I'll put more details down below here. So, you know, feel free to get take the links. And, you know, if you have any questions or suggestions or whatever you guys you like to see, just let me know and we're gonna try to accommodate.